What's going on friends? It is no secret that today's prices are absolutely out of control. You can barely get into a new Harley Davidson motorcycle for anything less than about 20 grand, unless some of the soft tails, even the Sportsters, are now ridiculously overpriced, even though this may be their last year. So what's this leave you to do? This leads you to go out and look for a good used option. But guys, I'm here to tell you the absolute best value in a used Harley Davidson it's just a good old big twin 1340cc Evo. You can't beat that motor for a used bike, especially if you're on a budget, and I'm gonna tell you why. Now, if you guys are a frequent viewer of the channel, it is no secret that I am a big Evo engine fan. That has been one of my favorite engines ever from Harley Davidson. That engine is absolutely legendary, and right now, the prices on a good used evolution powered big twin, they're really not that bad. You could get a nice evolution B twin motorcycle for anywhere from, we're talking maybe five to $10,000. There's even some real screaming deals out there anywhere from two to $5,000. And this may not sound like a lot of money. You're probably thinking, yeah, it's gonna have a lot of miles on it. Might have some issues with it or whatever, but that's the kicker about the Evolution engine, is that the parts are stupid cheap. Most parts for those engines cost way less than their comparable counterparts in the Twin Cam and in the Milwaukee 8. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoy the video today, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. So guys, say you do go out and you find you an Evo-powered like dresser for $5,000. Okay, cool. It's got 60,000 miles on it. Not a big deal, really. Half the time, they still run really well. But if you want to freshen that up on the weekend in your garage, you're looking at about 600 bucks to get a top-end kit. In fact, you can get a top-end kit that's got a little higher compression pistons in it to give it a little bump. And who knows, this bike may or may not already have a cam in it. And if it doesn't, it's a great time to slide a cam in there. You can get a nice cam for an Evolution engine for anywhere from about $150 to $300, just depending on what you get. And where you really save money there is you don't have to go in and worry about replacing cam plates, tensioners, chains, any of this other stuff. The only thing you want to do is put in a new cam bearing and you're good to go. You don't have all that other extra crap that you get with like the twin cams and the Milwaukee 8s. So right there, you're still saving money on that $5,000 bike. You're into it, you got everything in it, you put another grand in it, and that's it. And did I mention with the Evos? Well, I'll get into the Evo fuel injection here in a minute, but with Evos, carburetor, just a jet kit. You're looking at an $80 jet kit. Dial it in. You might put an ignition system in it if you want. That right there saves you $500 of a dyno run to get it dialed in, or hell, even five to $700 buying a flash tuner for the fuel injection system. Now, as I mentioned before, fuel-injected Evo, probably not something that you're going to want to mess with, as they had the Magnetti Morelli, and that was really kind of a beautiful disaster. Magnetti Morelli worked great when it worked, but if you tried to jack with it, or it started having problems, it's better off just to get rid of the bike, because not a lot of places are going to touch those systems anymore. Parts are hard to come by, and you're really just kind of digging for used parts. So if you do have a fuel injected one and you are having an issue with it, best thing you can do is going to be to convert it over a carburetor or you could try to upgrade it to a new Delphi system, but that's a lot of money to go for a Delphi system. I would just convert it back over to a car personally. So guys, Evolution engines, we are already looking at $150-$200 for a cam. A cam bearing is no more than like $20 and a change of oil. Now the only flip side on an Evo is that the push rod angles, I've mentioned this before, they are pretty harsh, so they like to eat their lifters at 40,000 miles, and you can get a set of lifters for these for about $150 to $300, once again, depending on what kind of lifter you want to go with. Now, here's the other really cool thing that I love about the Evolution engine, the lifter blocks. Yes, lifter blocks do wear out. Now, unfortunately, on Twin Cam and Milwaukee 8s, the lifter blocks are cast into actually part of the casing. 
But on the Evo, the lifter blocks themselves are actually removable so you can replace them. Now with the Evo, you have several different options. Unlike with the twin cam in the Milwaukee 8, if your lifter blocks start to get a little wore out, run out, and the listers start turning in there and rattling, you have to go with a plus size lifter. You have to buy oversized lifters. Now also with the Evo, they have these options as well to go with oversized lifters if your lifter blocks are worn. Or, which is my preferred method of doing it, is just replacing the lifter blocks themselves. They're unbolt on the Evo. Yes, it is another point that could possibly leak, but you have to give something up for something, and having that kind of serviceability without having to completely rely on just going with a larger lifter to fit that bore, you have that trade-off where you, it, you could have a leak there. Does it happen? It's a Harley. Of course it happens. But it's a good trade-off to have and not be locked into having to just go with an oversized lifter. Now, yes, there are some bolt-on kits out there for Evo engines. They usually run about seven, eight hundred dollars, somewhere up over a thousand dollars for some of them. You can bolt on roughly anywhere from eighty-five to eighty-eight inches to some of these Evo engines, but yeah, there's some issues there with doing that. But just keeping the stock eighty cubic inches and going with just a nice little bolt-in cam in this thing. You're going from about 55 horsepower to about 75 horsepower, and you can pull down about 80 foot-pounds of torque. And even with the, the right exhaust and some good tuning and like really spend some time dialing in the carburetor, you can probably pull a little bit more than that, honestly. Now, even if you decided to go with maybe a little bit higher compression, you went up to nine to one or nine and a half to one, and you have a little bit of head work done paired with your cam, and then you also have that good exhaust and a good tune in that thing, You'd be looking at horsepower close to 90 and then torque rising to almost 100 foot pounds. So, yeah, the Evo was never known for a big, like, overwhelming amount of power, and that's why they came out with the twin cam. But these engines are no slouches. And I'm, let me remind you, this is still at 80 cubic inches. Just a little compression and a little head work. Now, I mean, check out this example. Here we have the heads work, we've got the cam in there, and we've got some good high compression pistons in it. We're at 101 horsepower and 101 foot-pounds of torque. That is some really good, reliable horsepower on an Evo. Now, different years of the Evolution engine, they do have some different little quirks about the cases and things like that. And there's also the INA bearing that you want to switch back out for the Torrington, roughly about 1992 there. But just little things like that. But there's really nothing major with these engines. And plus, the other thing that's really nice about the Evo, the cam chest is very simple. It's all gear driven. The oil pump is external, so you don't have to worry about getting in there and all the damage and things that can be caused with a oil pump being internal like we saw with the twin cam engine. Not to mention, the Evo also has the Timken bottom end and the serviceable crank. The cranks are not pressed on the Evolution engines and they also have the Timken bottom end so we don't have all that slop in the engine. You have the manual primary chain tensioner on these things. Everything is right there if you want to get a good Harley-Davidson motorcycle and save yourself some money in the process. I love these bikes for people that like to do their own work. You can buy one, you can get a service manual, you can do this work yourself. It's very simple on these bikes. Or even if you do take it to a shop, this is gravy. For a shop. This is easy work for them. And generally with an Evo, it does not cost as much in labor because there's a lot less involved on these motors versus like a twin cam or a Milwaukee A. So the Evos really are win-win any way you really want to look at it. That's why I love these motors and especially today with everything being so expensive, you can go out, spend a little bit of money on a, a new bike, well, new to you bike, we're talking five, six thousand dollars. I've seen really clean ones you could eat off of that look like came off the showroom floor. They're running about ten grand right now, which to me that's a little steep for an Evo, unless it's got a lot of stuff done to it. It's just what I really, really want. But even then, I like to stick with the forty-five hundred to about six thousand dollar bikes personally. That's what I like to do because I like to get in there, fix them up, work on them, ride them a little bit. And then that's the other beautiful thing about them. You could turn around and sell them if you wanted to and kind of recoup your money. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Everything is costing out the butt. 
and I wanted to give you guys an idea out there of what you could do with an evolution powered motorcycle. Don't overlook them. Yeah, twin cams are nice, Milwaukee 8s are nice, but a little bit of elbow grease into a good old Evo powered bike, it'd make you a wonderful motorcycle that'll last you for years. But anyhow guys, if you enjoyed the video today, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But until next week guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.